Hi, here is Rolf from Waldorf. This is a quick take about the poly aftertouch keybed of the new Iridium keyboard synthesizer. So what is poly aftertouch and what is aftertouch at all? You know that from a normal keybed you can press with velocity depending on how hard and fast you play a key you get a louder or uh, softer sound or there are some other modulation going on. But on a classical piano, after um, pressing the key, there's no additional modulation anymore possible. Okay, with aftertouch, I can add additional modulation to a note once a note is pressed. So let's press a key and I'm applying some extra pressure which adds a little bit of vibrato, in this case, and a little bit of um, cutoff. If I'm now pressing two keys, let's press a low note and a high note, and I'm just adding pressure to the high note, just the high note is getting the aftertouch. If I'm doing this to the um, lowest note, See, this is what's called polyphonic aftertouch. So I, let's say I can hold a chord here. And just the melody line on the right hand gets a modulation. Now, um, what's the difference to monophonic aftertouch, uh, which is mostly common these days on keybeds? So I can switch here in the... Um, level page from polyphonic aftertouch to monophonic just to mimic the um, old style behavior. So I'm pressing again a chord and I'm... Now with uh, applying additional pressure on the melody also the chord gets this modulation. Which is sometimes what you want but not always. So with that additional feature of polyphonic aftertouch, the chord on the left hand keeps silent and on the right hand I can do the modulation. This is just one use case of um, doing it. Of course, let's take another sound. Um, I can try to play polyphonically in a way that both lines or multiple lines get their own aftertouch, but that's not always uh, what's wanted. So let's get, for example, um, a bass sound. Here you see that the modulation quickly jumps in and um, we found it's sometimes um, very usable to apply, not immediately apply the modulation when increasing the pressure, but smooth it a little bit out with an attack curve. I can set this here per sound. Let's make it even a little bit longer. I can now much smoother fade in and I can do the same for the release. But this I have much more um, finer control. It depends on the sound, how you want to do it. So we have these extra parameters. Let's take another sound. Uh, we have a very beautiful sound, um, the river too, which it does a little bit of a pitch modulation um, with aftertouch. Beautiful. This kind of very specific pitch modulation is really only possible with polyphonic aftertouch. For comparison, going back to monophonic, You see how the chord also in the left hand does the pitch modulation, which is really not what you want in this case. Um, this modulation of the pitch by aftertouch is also um, leading back to the history of aftertouch. 
because not the synthesizer guys invented aftertouch. It really goes back for 500 years, even before the invention of the um, pianoforte, by an instrument called clavichord. The clavichord was an instrument which had polyphonic aftertouch where each note could control the pitch with a kind of pitch vibrato, which was called in Germany Bebung. Johann Sebastian Bach used that instrument. Um, so if you check out the clavichord in recordings um, in the internet, you can uh, listen and see this effect. So we are really going back here in history. So that was a quick take about the polyphonic aftertouch history. Um, how do we modulate um, when we want to um, design a fresh sound? So let's make an init sound on the iridium, which is just the sine wave of a, a wave table, which you see here. Now, the easiest way to add a modulation is just to press the modulation button and then to wiggle the knob which you want to modulate. And here you see a lot of different uh, modulation sources. On the right bottom, you see aftertouch. So if I'm increasing the aftertouch here a little bit, I can determine how quickly I um, go through the wave table. I can do it the same, which is typical with the cutoff. So I'm getting the sawtooth. I'm dialing back the cutoff because I want to add cutoff with the aftertouch. Again, I'm pressing mod, wiggling a little bit of the um, target, the cutoff, adding aftertouch. So it's very easy to quickly add aftertouch. For more complex um, edits, you can go into the modulation matrix and not only use aftertouch as a source of a modulation, but also control with the controller feature here, um, the amount of some other modulation like LFO um, to the destination. Please check out the uh, manual for more information about this. To close, I like to go to the um, calibration screen. You reach in global system and then calibrate AT. It's a bit like velocity. This is a semi-weighted typical um, high-end synthesizer keypad, but depending on if you're used to playing an acoustic piano or even a grand piano, um, your, the strengths of your fingers might be different. So we have here a general curve about um, how strong um, the aftertouch pressure is applied. So you can make it very soft. So if you are not playing with much pressure, it immediately goes. If I'm putting it so more hard curve, I need to add some extra pressure. So let's put it in the middle. There is also a delay time. So if you're hitting a note, you typically do not want to get after touch modulation immediately in. So there's a little bit of a um, time delay. So from very short of a few milliseconds uh, up to 200 milliseconds. So if I have a very high time here, it takes a while until um, after a note is pressed, um, aftertouch is recognized. But typically you want to set it to a fairly low uh, value, maybe like 20 milliseconds. There's also, um, in addition to the curve, there's a minimum and the maximum threshold. The minimum threshold means how much initial pressure I have to put into a key until the aftertouch, it all reacts. So if I'm putting this to a very high value, you hardly can see my pressure here, but um, I can act now a little bit of pressure, nothing happens, only if I have a threshold. If I'm putting this down, 
it immediately rela uh, um, reacts. So if you are a heavy hitter on the on the keypad, uh, you want to put this to a higher value, not to get uh, inadvertently um, aftertouch. And last but not least, you could even uh, for individual keys give some extra values here. So if you have in after 10 or 20 years, some key maybe gets a little bit of loose or whatever, which shouldn't happen. But in any case, you can adapt even here for individual keys, the pressures, but normally uh, that's not needed. Let's finish with two sounds from the um, factory library to um, show um, what aftertouch modulation can do in a sound. So this is a sound from Mike Huckabee. He did for the original Quantum. So there's some beautiful modulation going on. He is using here the waveform sync. So this is a hard sync uh, amount which is modulated by the aftertouch. Very beautiful. And last but not least, there's a sound from um, Howard Scar called Singing Sparkles. This beautiful renders here um, a whole range of different parameters you see here in the modulation matrix. And uh, it's a beautiful example how aftertouch can modulate. For example, here the LFO speed, he is doing a little bit of filtering cutoff, even the pitch of oscillator one and the and digital former amount. This sounds really shines now with the new polyphonic aftertouch feature because uh, you can even uh, modulate more precise what you want and the good thing is to compare to other controllers like MPE uh, we just have one additional dimension like the aftertouch so that means you do not have to relearn anything it's just an additional feature additional options to increase your uh, expressivity without relearning everything. Okay, thanks for watching. This is a new Iridium keyboard synthesizer with polyphonic aftertouch. Um, please enjoy and make some good music with it. Bye bye.